Hey everyone, this is Hashem. Thanks for tuning in to another Pushing Film video. Today I'm going to talk about bulk loading your own 35mm film in order to save money. This one's been requested a fair bit, so I thought I would share my thoughts and advice. I'm going to break the video down into a few different sections that I'll put in the chapter markers below. And basically I'm going to start off by doing a sort of a cost comparison of how much you could save potentially by bulk loading your own film. Talk a little bit about the difference between uh, black and white and color, what you'll need. And then I'll do a quick example of the actual process, how you bulk load your own 35mm film cassettes, which is actually fairly easy. You need something like this, which is a bulk loader. It's basically going to hold a long reel of film, a 100 foot reel of film like this uh, HB5 here inside of it, which is light tight. And then you get empty 35mm film canisters, which are either leftover from rolls of film you've already shot, leftover from the lab, or you develop your own film and keep the canisters, or you can actually buy these plastic ready to go 35 mil uh, canisters, cassettes that you can then use to bulk load your own film onto. So basically this bulk loader opens up, there's a little doorway in here. Other brands of bulk loaders work very similarly. And then you put that in here, close it back up and use the little winder to wind on a certain length of film onto this cassette you don't even need to roll on a specific amount you can put a 24 shot uh, amount on you can load up 12 shots 36 whatever you like because the bulk loader in this situation for example works by giving a little tick sound for every frame approximately that you load onto that cassette and with today's rising cost of film this is becoming a little bit more relevant than ever and probably one of the reasons why i've had this requested a fair bit so let's talk a little bit about how much you can actually save by bulk loading your own film and whether that's worth it for you, depending how much you shoot. So for example, there are a lot of commercially available uh, black and white bulk rolls of film from companies like Ilford and Kodak. And in the example of this roll, this 100 foot roll of Ilford HB5, this costs about 150 Australian dollars for me to buy. And with 100 feet of film, I can bulk load about 18 36 shot rolls of smaller cassettes like this. So in comparison to actually buying ready to go rolls of Ilford HP5 in this case, with bulk loading, it would cost me about, I've got a calculation here that I noted down earlier, about $7.70 or $8 Australian per roll. And uh, buying a roll of HP5 commercially, the cheapest I can usually find it is in those um, unboxed foil wrapped uh, rolls which are about $11 Australian. So the saving there isn't huge. It's about 70 something, 75% of the cost, let's say on average. And this should translate the same across to anyone watching in the US. So in the US, the bulk roll costs about 90 US dollars and then buying individual rolls of HP5 probably costs you about uh, five US dollars per roll um, if you've bulk loaded it or $8 if you're buying it commercially. So a similar saving there, about 75% of the cost and you can kind of translate that across the board because Kodak bulk rolls are pretty expensive. Here in Australia, they're about $200. You can get slightly cheaper brands of black and white bulk rolls from Kentmere and Arista and brands like that. And the saving becomes a little bit better. It might be 65% of the cost, maybe 70, but you're still gonna pay about $100 for a bulk roll of film. And it's worthwhile, I think, if you're shooting a lot of black and white and that saving will uh, add up in the long run. Some things you need to consider obviously are that you need to invest in the actual bulk loader itself. That's a one-off cost and it's not too bad. It'll pay for itself if you are shooting a lot. And then also the time taken in actually loading up the rolls. It doesn't take too long. It's not too bad, but then you have to source out the cassettes or buy some of these refillable ones. And then you just need things like some tape. So you need to factor that in if you're just getting into this. On the other hand, let's have a look at loading your own color. This is where a lot of people, I think, are gaining interest in bulk loading because you can get bulk rolls of color film. The only thing is it's fairly limited. You can't just buy commercial ready-to-go packs of Kodak Portra 400, as far as I know, in 100-foot um, reels. But you can get fresh or, or more or less fresh stock of cinema film, which is what I do. What I like to bulk load a lot at the moment, I don't really do much bulk loading of black and white film anymore because it's become more expensive and I don't find the savings are quite that great, uh, even though I haven't ruled it out. But bulk loading your own color. Let's look at the cost of this. This is a bulk roll of Kodak 500T, 
rebranded and sold by Ultrafine Online as Motipix 500T, essentially Kodak 500T. But the big disclaimer here is that this is cinema film. It's designed to be processed in ECN2 and it has a Remjet layer on it. So if you're going to bulk load your own color cinema film, you have to take into account that labs won't be able to process it for you. You will be ideally processing this film yourself. You don't have to do it in ECN2. I like to do it in C41. I find the results are just as good as ECN2 for my application. I can make all the difference in scanning and I get perfectly good results. I'll share some of them with you on the screen to show you some of the results I've gotten in the past by bulk loading my own Kodak Vision 500T. And I've got some great examples of a, a whole bulk roll of 250D that I've been through in the past. And I enjoy the results I get shooting this film, processing it in C41 at home and going through that extra step of removing the Remjet layer, which also isn't too hard and something I would be willing to do a video on in the future. So let me know if you're interested in that. But let's talk about the cost difference when it comes to shooting color. So this bulk roll of 500T cost me about $150 to $170 now, I think the current cost is, including shipping, because these aren't so readily available in shops here in Australia. So I've counted in shipping, and it's probably cost about $170, $176 in today's money if you were to buy one of these and have it shipped. Uh, and if you're over in the US, it's 110 US dollars. And I think stores like Ultrafine Online, which is where I bought this, would ship to you a lot cheaper in the US or even free. So in comparison to buying one of these ready-to-go rolls of Portra 400, and I would say 500T is just as high a quality film as Portra 400, uh, 250D also, you've got lots of options when it comes to cinema films, which is great. Uh, but the difference is much better. It's less than half the cost. Currently, a roll of Portra 400 costs about 22 Australian dollars. If I was buying the 500T bulk roll and loading up my own cassettes, I'm paying about nine or ten dollars a roll so i've written that down here i think individually it's um nine dollars 77 per roll or if you're in the us it's six us dollars per roll and the cost of the commercial roll is like i said 22 australian dollars for buying portra 400 or maybe 13 dollars if you're over in the us so as you can see that's 44 percent of the cost and when it comes to color if you're happy to develop yourself the saving in my opinion is worth it but there is the added hassle and initial expense of the bulk loader. These aren't too expensive. You can often find them used for 20 or 30 bucks and uh, it'll pay for itself in the long run if you are going to go through that film over whatever period that you'll be using it. So is it worth it for you? That's up to you to decide, make your own calculations. Are you willing to go through that extra step and initial investment of loading your own canisters? Uh, how do you go about finding these empty used canisters if you don't develop your own film, for example? Well, in my advice, it's generally pretty easy to head to any of your local labs because they often have hundreds, if not thousands of these empty canisters left over from all the film that they take in to develop that they usually have to throw out or recycle. So they're often more than happy to give you some of their leftover uh, canisters for free so that you can use them for bulk loading your own film. Otherwise, you can buy these little plastic ones which actually come apart to make things a little bit easier to use for bulk loading. Uh, but I find it's pretty easy to head to your local lab and ask for the free ones. Better yet, if you're someone who develops your own film you can keep the canisters that you use after developing film. And the way to do that is to avoid cracking the film canister open completely and destroying it when you develop film, which is a way to go about it. But if you plan on reusing the film canister, you can start using a film picker to pick out the film when you're developing your own film at home so that you can leave this usable for bulk loading. So that's how I would advise you to go about getting or, or keeping film canisters to use for bulk loading. So the other thing you need, I've already mentioned, which is the bulk loader itself. This one is an LPL day roll bulk loader, really popular on the market, but there's other examples out there. You need some scissors and just some tape. I usually advise using this uh, Scotch type tape, whether it's the actual 3M Scotch brand or not. I find this works fairly well. So now let's get into the part of the video where I'm gonna show you how to bulk load a roll of 35 mil film, at least the way I do it and give you a couple of views of how I do it as I go through the process. All right, so this bulk loader is 
already pre-filled with a reel of Kodak 500T that I mentioned earlier. Now, the only thing I'm not going to show you in this video because I find it's a little bit tricky to show it's something that happens in the dark and needs to be done in a dark bag is the actual process of filling the bulk loader with the film. There are other videos out there that have done a pretty good job of showing this and simulating how it would be done in the dark. Another thing is that it changes between bulk loader to bulk loader. So it's better to follow the instructions that came with your bulk loader, watch a few videos, and then get your head around how to actually load the 100 foot reel into here. What I'm gonna show is basically how easy it is to actually bulk load these cassettes, just so that you can get an idea if it's something you're willing to do and that you wouldn't find too intim intimidating to actually embark upon in order to get into bulk loading your own film. So in this case, I'm gonna fill this used canister of JCH street pan that was left over from when I home developed this roll of film. You can see I've tried to cut a straight line in the remaining film that's attached inside the canister there and I'm going to open the bulk loader and you can see the uh, ready to go part of uh, film that's inside there. I'm going to grab a piece of scotch tape and what I generally do is attach this to the underside of the film that's sticking out of the bulk loader, the part that's ready to go. So I attach uh, roughly double length, double the width of the film length piece of tape like that. I grab my roll of film and I just try and line that up as straight as possible so that the edges align, press it down, and then I just fold over those bits of tape so that it completely tapes uh, that film onto both sides. And then what you do is just rewind it back into the canister there so that it can sit nice and neat inside the bulk loader. Then I close the door grab the little crank, insert that into the bulk loader, and then I load on, let's say I'm gonna do 36 shots onto this one. And the good thing is I don't need to keep count because there's a little counter on the front of the bulk loader there that you can hear ticking every time I load on a frame. So I'm just looking at that, waiting for it to go all the way back to the start line, which is designed to be at 36 shots. And that's it. You don't have to be exact. You can, again, load on however many shots you like. Remove the crank. Pull out the roll of film, which now has that film loaded onto it. And you just cut it in the beginning again. And you have that roll of film ready to go. And you just cut that shape of the leader into it so that it's ready to roll into your camera. So it's really as easy as that. I now have myself a bulk loaded roll with 36 shots of Kodak Vision 500T, which I'm going to develop at home after I shoot it, removing the ramjet layer, which is super easy, and save myself more than um, twice the cost. Uh, saving, it's costing me half the amount that it would cost to shoot a roll of Portra 400, and it's still cheaper than some of the, the consumer films like Color Plus 200, which now costs about 11 or 12 Australian dollars per roll. And uh, I think it's worth it if you're shooting a lot, if you're willing or already develop your own color film at home. When it comes to black and white, maybe not as much. I'm still happy uh, loading color film, but then buying commercial packs of HP5 or even Kentmere 400, which is pretty cheap. And if I ever get my hands on a good deal on, on a cheap box of Ilford HP5, for example, this one actually cost me $50 back when I bought it because it was expired. Uh, yeah, I would still consider doing that and even having a second bulk, loading, a bulk loader for black and white film. So that's it guys, that's my thoughts and um, basic information that I want to share with you about bulk loading your own film, how much it could save you, what you actually have to consider and go through. Uh, when it comes to actually buying the film, that's where the difficulty lies, whether you have to buy it online, have it shipped, if you have good prices in your area. This one is empty, so obviously, you know, I'm able to open it, but it's pretty simple. It comes in a big reel inside of a dark bag like that. So again, you do have to load it in the dark, either using a changing bag or a completely dark room from there into the bulk loader. But once you have that, you can just keep that aside, load up your rolls of film whenever you need them. You can pre-roll a whole bunch of them and save yourself a lot of money. So if you have any other further questions about this process or anything else you'd like to see me do a video on that's related to this, such as how I go about developing my own uh, cinema film at home, removing the Remjet, I know there's probably already a bunch of videos on that on the internet, but if you want to see my way of doing it, feel free. If there's anything that I did in this video that you think is a little bit wrong or that you do differently, let me know because I know this is my method. That's the tape I use. That's the method I use to bulk load. 
Feel free to share your method in the comments, what you think could be done differently and any other tips that you think might be helpful to other people that are watching this video or reading the comments. So thanks for watching this pushing film video. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one.